Hi there, my name is Tammy Hicks, and uh, today we are going to talk about practicing self-care. This is something that everyone needs, and um, today I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how you can implement some of these routines into your daily life. So let me share my screen here, and we will get started. Okay, a little bit about me. So I'm married with three grown children, ages 22, 19, and 17. I'm a holistic health coach studying to be a functional nutritionist. Um, I'm passionate about teaching others how to live a clean lifestyle and to improve their health and wellness through holistic products and different modalities. So today's topic is self-care that equals self-love. And we're going to learn about why self-care is important and some of the things that you can do to incorporate more um, self-care into your daily life. So what is self-care? So self-care is really performing a series of actions to improve your physical, mental, and emotional well-being in an effort to eliminate life's triggers and stress. Um, it's identifying what you need in order to manage life stress and live a joy full of um, uh, life, uh, your, live your life full of joy and inner peace. Self-care is a lifestyle. Um, it's intentional. And in this lifestyle, you feel in control of your health, your body, your mind, and your spirit. Like I said, self-care is self-love. It's not self-indulgence. It is not selfish. Um, and self-care promotes a healthy relationship with yourself as well. Why is it important? Um, so self-care practices can improve your mood, help reduce stress, improve your immune function, increase productivity, and it also increases self-esteem as well. It allows you to relax and recover um, so that you're better able to perform and adapt more easily. And self-care shows your children, your family members, your spouse, and others that caring for yourself is okay. In fact, it's one of the best things that you can do for yourself and also for them because when you feel in control of yourself, and when you feel good about yourself, that creates a ripple effect onto others. Um, there's an epidemic of anxiety, depression, and stress. And in this fast paced, always on world, people are less able to kind of really unwind and slow down, which makes them feel very anxious um, and overwhelmed, which causes damage again to your body and mind. So let's talk real quick about how stress actually does affect your body. So the human body is designed to experience stress and react to it. Stress actually can be positive, helps to keep you alert and ready to avoid danger. So for example, if you're being chased by a bear, you actually want that adrenaline, the stress hormone to kick in so that you can run from the bear. The problem is, is that stress really becomes negative when a person faces continuous um, challenges without relief uh, and relax relaxation between challenges. So stress that continues without relief is what we consider distress, which is a negative stress reaction. Um, and distress can lead to physical and psychological issues, headaches, stomach issues. I mean, we're going to talk about this slide to the right here. Look at all the different ways that stress can affect your body. We're talking about the skin, right? So um, things come out in your skin. You've got acne, eczema, psoriasis, skin rashes, stuff like that. In your stomach, this can cause, um, you know, uh, upset stomach. People say I have, you know, butterflies or whatever. It can also cause um, ulcers, IBS, food allergies, uh, reflux, lots of different things. Your pancreas, your immune system, it actually um, stress when you're under stress continuously can reduce your immune response. Um, it can also, since your body is not able to adapt more easily, you're more likely to um, get sick or have uh, diagnosed with other um, chronic conditions. Your head, we're talking your mood, um, your uh, headaches, uh, trouble concentrating, trouble sleeping, your heart, your intestines, reproductive system, joint muscles. So I'm, you wanna take a picture of that? feel free to go ahead, but really stress affects almost every function of your body. So really managing that is going to be helpful. And self-care is one way that you can manage that. So um, research also suggests that stress can bring on or worsen symptoms of disease. And I promise you that if you do not deal with your stress, it will come out somewhere and at some point in your life. 
excuses and obstacles that we hear um, a lot. So the most common excuses that people make for not taking care of themselves, I hear it all the time, time and money. I don't have the time. Let's start with that. Find the time. It is imperative to make time every day for yourself, even if it's just 15 minutes a day. Stop telling yourself that you don't have time. You are what you think, period, end of story. If you're constantly telling yourself, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, you will never find the time. You have to shift your mindset. People make time for what's important to them. Put yourself on the list and make yourself a priority. And I promise you, you will find the time. Maybe you get up 15 minutes early. Maybe you turn that TV off. You put your phone on airplane mode. Whatever it is, you can find the time. Most successful people really do take care of themselves, right? They make it a priority because without caring for themselves, they couldn't be able to do and be everything that they want for everyone else and for do to, to do for others, right? So you really have to make um, finding the time a priority for yourself. It is a choice. You have a choice. Second thing, find the money, right? I hear this all the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I don't have the money for a massage. I don't have the work money for a weekend away or a girl's night out. I don't have the money to eat healthy. These are stories that you're telling themselves. Now, I'm not saying that people are not under financial constraints. I 100% honor that and I hear that. But there are a ton of things that you can do, even in the self-care field, that cost nothing. There are other things that you can do um, if you do have excess money. So if you make something a priority, you will find a way. So again, putting yourself on that list is going to be really important. For most of us, think about how much money you spend on your kids on things that they don't need. Um, just, you know, just random things that they don't need. I know I did it for many, many years. I gave everything I had and I didn't put myself on the list and I suffered as a consequence. Um, so if you just put aside $2 a day, that's $20 a month, that's a massage. It could be a gym membership, depending on where you live or what kind of gym you go to. It could be a dinner with a friend. Um, it could be something that you just do for yourself. Um, and self-care also, like I said, doesn't have to cost anything. You can do most things inexpensively if needed. A facial, mindfulness, journaling, um, eating uh, better, um, getting to sleep on time. Uh, you can do a facial in your own home, a bath in your own home. You can exercise in your home. So are, there are a lot of things that you can do for yourself that do not cost money. So stop the excuses. So. Um, there are also avoidance issues as well. So life gets busy and self-care is normally the first thing that uh, people forget about. And the result is that you become even more stressed out and more burnt out. And avoidance causes more harm in, than good in the long run for you and for those around you. So many th people think that self-care is something that you do every six months, like, oh, I'm going to get a massage or I'm going to go get a facial. I haven't had one for six months. They use the time or no time, no money excuses. The reality is that true self-care are practices that we put in place every single day to care for and to honor ourselves. One day off is not enough to restore your body and mind for the stress that you've been putting it under on a daily basis. It takes time, it takes patience and effort to get out of that fight or flight response that most people are living in. So you need a self-care lifestyle where you are a priority, where you listen to your body in your mind every day, a life where you are in control of yourself. So avoidance is a coping mechanism. And instead of taking action for some people, um, getting a big bag of chocolate and sitting in front of the TV is easier if you don't know how to deal with um, the difficult emotions or the stress that you may un be under. So all you want to do is kind of forget about your stress and you think sitting there and eating that bag of chocolate or chips and zoning out on Netflix is self-care. And it's, you know, it's really not because you're not really kind of dealing with it. Um, and it's kind of that one and done sort of um, mentality. Again, self-care is a practice that you have to do frequently and consistently. As with most things, you have a choice. You have one body, you have one lifetime. So why not make, um, 
enjoy the ride as long as you can, taking care of your vehicle along the way, which is your mind and body. And I love this. So, um, you know, ask yourself if you can't avoid it, if you can't change it or make it go away, what if, just what if you changed how you respond to it? right? So we're not going to get rid of stress or our jobs or, you know, stress from kids or anything like that. Um, If you can't avoid it, change it or make it go away. How you respond to it can make all the difference in the world. So now think, how would your life change if you actually cared for yourself in a way that you cared for others? Um, Imagine how that would feel if you actually really nurtured yourself. And I'd like you to think about that, right? We take so much time and care um, to care for others, but we do not do that for ourselves. And it is so, so important to honor who we are um, and listen to ourselves and put us on the list. So different types of self-care. So there's several different types of self-care. It's not just going to get a massage, right? That's normally one of the first things people think of. There are lots of different ways that you can take care of yourself. So emotional self-care can look like talking to someone, journaling, reading, playing music, singing, crying, hugging someone, um, using your um, essential oils for emotional support. I love using my my essential oils. I love cheer um, when I'm feeling blue or motivate, console when my heart is heavy. So using your essential oils is really going to be helpful in that. Environmentally, take a walk. Go outside, breathe some fresh air, ground yourself with your feet in the grass, take your shoes off, put your feet in the grass, enjoy the night sky, redesign a room, um, change your environment, reduce clutter. Financially, right, come up with a budget, open a savings account, start saving, even if it's just a dollar a day, ask for a raise, right, take, um, avoid credit cards, having financial peace and security, Um, for some people can be a huge part of self-care for them. Intellectually, you can read, listen to audiobooks, watch documentaries, do puzzles, take a class, explore a new field of interest. Occupationally, learn a new trade, train for promotion, polish up your resume, ask for a raise, um, take on new tasks that you enjoy, open your own business. Physical, go work out walk, eating healthy, dry brushing, investing in yourself in massages, nutritionists, or personal trainers, get annual checkups, making sure that you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Socially, meet with friends and family, contact old friends, volunteer, go out and exude positivity. And then spiritually, meditate, pray, reflect, engage in yoga practices, visit a meaningful site um, that's a site that's meaningful to you, consider your higher purpose and meaning. So these are all some ideas and things that you can do in different areas to care for yourself. And I love using this chart to help people identify some areas of abundance and lack that they may have in their lives. So life, um, as with anything, is about balance. And when you're out of balance, things can really seem out of control and life can be stressful. So this exercise really helps you identify the areas that you're struggling with and also helps you really realize what's important to you. So I, if you can take a picture of this and then you can print it out. Um, or you can draw your own. Um, So there's zero in the middle and a hundred on the outside on the red uh, outer circle there. I want you to place a dot in each category, spirituality, creativity, finances, and so on. Place a dot in each category and rank yourself in your comfort and happiness level from zero to a hundred percent in each of the areas. And then I want you to connect the dots And then you'll be able to identify imbalances and areas of dissatisfaction or areas that you really are um, passionate about, that you really feel really good about, okay? Where to start? So looking at your chart from the previous page, we're going to reflect on the one or two areas that really bring you the most comfort, joy, and pleasure, because this is about self-care, right? So I want us to start there with areas that bring you joy and pleasure. Grab a piece of paper and write down everything you you can think of that you can do to care for yourself in that area. 
Um, what are things that, that you can do to bring you comfort, joy, or calm in those one or two areas? And I really want to only focus on one or two areas because it, what, what we do not want is you try to implement a bunch of things and then you're not able to keep up with them. And then you get discouraged and then you get down on yourself. So I, this is about creating a lifestyle and this is small changes over time. So start with one or two areas. Um, make the changes that are manageable, right? So like I said, you don't want to set up a bunch of stuff of self-care goals and then only to be disappointed that you didn't stick with them. Um, choose one behavior that you'd like to incorporate into your routine next week. Just choose one thing that you're going to incorporate. Commit to practicing that behavior every single day for a week. And then after that week is over, reflect how you feel. Um, add additional practices when you are ready, right? And even if you just start, maybe you wake up five minutes early the first seven days. And then the next seven days, you wake up 10 minutes early and then you incorporate one other thing. Doing the small steps for people is normally um, the easiest and it is the most sustainable. So get support through sharing your practices with loved ones or a coach or a licensed or certified professional, whether it's a dietitian, a personal trainer, a therapist, whomever. Share with your community, your family, or people at work so that you can be excited and share what you're doing. So um, you will never really be ready, right? Everyone puts everything off. You just have to start. So start now, start with fear, start with pain, start with doubt, um, start where you are at with what you have. So start and don't stop, just start. So my personal self-care practices, um, these are some of the things that I do. And keep in mind, when I started, I had no self-care practices. I was the person that got a massage every six months thinking that was self-care, right? I threw myself under the bus every single time for, um, for everybody else every single time. And um, that's not healthy. And it caught up with me. So I started several years ago, implementing one thing, right? And now I built this entire self care practice that I do, that incorporates all of these different things, right? So food is really important to me, what we put in our bodies, makes a huge difference in the quality of our cells and the quality of our life and the quality of our hormones makes a very big difference. So I eat clean, um, juicing, supplementation is huge for me. I really invest in my supplements. Um, I drink a gallon of purified um, filtered water every day. I use mineral drops, um, physical um, self-care. I get massages. I use my essential oil practices, dry brushing, um, sleeping a priority, detoxing several times a year, baths, um, all different kinds of things. Movement. I exercise routine of about five days a week. Um, and I use my Apple watch tracker as well to help me stay on track. Environmental, um, gardening, grounding in the grass, travel. Like these are some things that really bring me joy. Intellectually, I listen to pep talk. Um, I'm, I invested in Tony Robbins inner circle monthly classes. Um, I do an audio book an hour every, um, every night uh, just to make sure that I'm keeping intellectually keeping myself um, not only just sharp, but also keeping myself pumped up and positive. Financially, right? I stop spending unnecessarily. Um, I ask myself if it's a want or a need um, and if that purchase also aligns with my long-term goals. That is really good. And that's why kind of setting up the goals that you want and the areas that you are, um, are positive about um, is going to be important. So you can be like, okay, does this really line up with where, what brings me joy? And if it does, great, and you can afford it, do it. And if it does not, maybe that's something that you hold off on. Um, our financial advisor said something that I thought was really interesting. You know, everyone says like, oh, it's only $50, or it's only $200 or whatever. That $200 is only $200 today. But when invested properly, that can be $50,000 plus in, you know, 10 years. So um, for me, that was a really um, interesting and important point to shift my mindset. Occupationally, so I'm constantly trying to um, advance myself. So taking, um, becoming a functional nutritionist, uh, I want to do GI mapping. 
something next. So always kind of pushing myself really brings me joy and lights me up. Spiritually, I um, prime, meditate, and I'm very mindful of my attitude. So for, if you don't know what priming is, it is a practice that um, was introduced to me through um, Unleash the Power Within at Tony Robbins. And you can find it uh, on YouTube, search Tony Robbins priming, and it's about 10 to 15 minutes, but I love it because it incorporates breath work, um, gratitude, vision and goal setting, um, um, physiology and movement. So it's really a great practice that I love to start my day with. So these are just some of the things that I have done. And granted, I didn't start out with all this stuff. I started with one thing and it built a very good self-care practice. And remember that self-care is about you, right? It's about what brings you joy, comfort, and peace, and what aligns with your goals and dreams. So you may need to find a few different things that feel right for you, but don't stop. Keep exploring. Um, whatever you do, it must be done with intention and consistency to have the maximum impact. So if you only have five-minute increments throughout the day, use that time wisely. And over time, you're going to begin to see the benefits of peace within your Yourself. And again, like I said, that also has ripple effects for others, because when you feel good, when you feel calm and centered, that ripples out to other people as well, and they'll feel it and um, they'll feel it from you. So thank you so much for joining this class. I hope that you learned something. Um, for additional natural health solutions and tips on how to live a non-toxic lifestyle, sign up for my newsletter at www.tammyhicks.com. Um, there's my contact information and always remember to take care of yourself. I hope you enjoyed the class. And like I said, please reach out to me for any additional questions, um, comments, or assistance. I'd be happy to help you. Take care.